Hello friends, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in this session, I am going to discuss regarding a UART protocol, which is very important protocol and it will be asked in maximum number of interviews, embedded interviews. So uh, at the end of this uh, session, you will be able to understand uh, what is UART protocol and what is uh, UART, uh, how it works and why UART is required and what is the uh, speed and what is uh, what are the advantages, disadvantages and applications of UART protocol. I will try to cover in detail in this particular session. So please do subscribe to my YouTube channel and please press the bell icon so that you can, will get the keep on getting the latest updates whichever I am posting. So let us directly start with the UART protocol which is very important protocol. Um, so this UART protocol is nothing but UART stands for Universal Asynchronous Receiver and Transmitter. So universal because it is uh, it is used in most of the microprocessors or microcontrollers. So hence the name universal. Asynchronous. This is an asynchronous protocol which means that we are not using any of the clock pulses in order to transmit the data. And receiver transmitter that means UART has a two hard. It is a hardware basically which has receiver as well as transmitter hence the name receiver and transmitter i hope the name is clear now so uart is nothing but universal asynchronous receiver transmitter so this is all about the naming uh, naming of uart protocol so next we will try to understand uh, uart in more detail uh, now so uart as i told it is universal asynchronous receiver and transmitter so so there is somewhat confusion there will always be a confusion like uart protocol is a communication protocol or not no definitely this is not a communication protocol i can say it is a hardware actually is uart is a hardware or computer component so within that in hardware itself there will be some sort of communication is required so in that case uh, we can say this says uh, i mean that this is a hardware or computer component uh, in which the data can be transmitted so next is this is a serial communication protocol that means the data is transmitted serially that is what is serial communication uh, the data will be transmitted in a serial manner like uh, at a time the data will be uh, I mean in the serial way uh, one after the other it will be transmitted one after the other format it will be transmitted that's why it is called as serial communication protocol and one more thing is uart is a two wire protocol that i will show you in the next diagram so uart is a two wire that means only two wires are required for this particular protocol so which is very simple right so in this way uh, this is a two wire protocol so the data format and transmission speeds are configurable that means the data format how the data needs to be there will be some uh, set of rules to transmit the data is it so data format we can say for that so format and the transmission speed that speed at which i want to transmit a data are both are configurable that means we can change this format also we can change and definitely speed also we can change so the, as far as speed is concerned the maximum speed which is observed in uart protocol is 921.6 kbps so this is the uh, regarding basics regarding uart protocol let me remind you like uart is a hardware it is present in a part of hardware or a part of computer component or it is present in microprocessor or microcontroller which is uh, that is a hardware component i can say it's not a communication uh, i mean it is not we can say it is a communication based uh, protocol so this is uh, the important thing about uart protocol which you need to remember so now we will go for slowly the uart frame format which is very important so how the UART frame look like before going to that I would as, as I told you this is a two wire protocol as you can see here this is a TX that is transmitter this is RX which is a receiver here also TX and RX are transmitter and receiver respectively. So here this is the data bus and this is also data bus so here what I can say is that this is UART1 device and this is UART2 so as I told this is a hardware so hence this is the uh, IC kind of thing where uh, uh, we can say this is a UART1 and UART2. So now here data bus. So here before data bus there will be microprocessor uh, will be giving us the data in the form of parallel format. So this is parallel because one at a time we are able to get the data so from bit 0 to bit 1. So hence this is a parallel way which we are going to get data from the microprocessor on the data bus. 
so this is the data bus i can say so on the data bus since the data is transmitted by the microprocessor or microcontroller then we will be able to fed this as input to the uart1 so uart receives the parallel data now next it will convert it into serial format and give it to the uart2 and then uart2 will receive this particular data from the uart1 and it transmits in the parallel format converts it into parallel format and again it gives on the data bus and from there microprocessor or microcontroller will get the data so this is all about the uh, uart uh, the basic uh, like block diagram i can say so now as i told now we will concentrate more on the uart frame format which is very important so as you can see this is the frame format and i uh, let me remind you like uart frame format and speed are configurable that means we can change but this is the basic uh, frame format which is usually followed i can say so in this way it is uh, i can just show you know like how the frame format looks like in uart so this is a start bit this is start bit which is usually in uh, i mean it is uh, in logic high but uh, i will tell you like when it goes to logic zero and all so it consists of start bit d0 to d7 are data bits from d0 to d7 are data bits and pb is nothing but the parity bit i will tell you in detail like why parity bit and what and all so know how you will come to know how, uh, in later so this is parity bit and the next one is stop bit so this is the uh, bits which are present in the uh, frame format of uart so now we will try to understand each and every bit in detail so start is nothing but the bit in the uart frame format which is usually high okay uh, by default it will be high and once data if some transmitter want uh, if, if something someone wants to send the data then if it starts receiving then this particular uh, bit goes to logic zero so this goes to usually by default it will be high only so if somebody wants to transmit then once the transmission starts then it will turn on to logical zero that means from logic 1 to logic 0 transmission if it happens as it is happening here logic 1 is this one logic 0 is this one logic 1 to logic 0 transmission is happening means the frame i mean is going to start the somebody is going to send the data it is that mean so as i you can see start by detecting transition from logic 1 to logic 0 i can say so once logic 1 it is a default state and when logic 1 turns to logic 0 of start bit then definitely the data is going to start transmission is going to start that is the meaning so next is once the logic 1 to logic 0 is turned now so that means the data is going to transmit on the uh, uh, that is you are so next one is d0 to d7 as i told you this is the data bit so which is uh, which consists of the actual data i can say in the form of bit format that is logic 0 or 1 each bit will occupy 0 or 1 based on the uh, whatever we want to send the data so this is d0 to d7 which are data bits so after this d7 you can see one more bit which is parity bit which is very important this is used to check the error if there is any data is transmitted with error erroneously or non erroneously so the, in order to identify this this parity bit will help us so this parity bit uh, i will just uh, tell you in detail like uh, what is this parity bit parity bit as i told you it is a uh, it is a bit which is used to uh, check whether the data is transmission was with error or it was without error so this parity bit can be 0 or 1 okay so if there is uh, if uh, it is 0 then it is i think it is e1 or 1 means odd so this uh, it will calculate like in data frame how many e1 bits are there and how many e1 ones are there and how many odd ones are there okay so in based on that this bit will be set so if there are uh, if there after receiving the format after the receiving only we are able to identify right like whether the transmitted bit was uh, received correctly or not so based on this pb we will get to know so if the we will know like what are the data bits how many ones or how many zeros are present in this particular data bit zero, d0 to d7 right so if d, if d0 to d7 has even number of ones and if this is mismatch i mean if it is one now so that means the even number of ones are not received that means there is some issue with the 
reception so in this case we will able to identify like there is error or not we will able to identify so i hope this is clear now so after this one the next uh, bit is stop which is usually uh, set to i mean uh, by default it will be zero and it will be turned into logic one and uh, that means the transmission is completed sample stop bit this is so this is all about the data frame format of the uh, UART. Okay. So now we will try to understand and uh, uh, in detail about uh, how data synchronization in UART is achieved. This is very important. See, uh, there will be baud rate, which is uh, very important. There will be some synchronization, correct? So how data, since this is universal asynchronous receiver transmitter, I told. So that means asynchronous means there is no clock pulse. Then how come the receiver and transmitter will uh, synchronize between those two so this is the question now so here the answer is like baud rate will be set so receiver and transmitter both will be set to a particular baud rate so the baud rate commonly used are 2400 bits per second and uh, 4800 bits per second and so on so these are most commonly used so i have mentioned only these two so baud rate will be set at what is this baud rate i will just uh, clarify so baud rate is the rate at which the bit needs to be transmitted so this is the uh, actual baud rate what it means so baud rate is the number of bits per second at which the transmission or reception should happen so if i mention 2004 let us take now i will set this uh, 2400 bits per second as the baud rate in transmitter and receiver also i have to uh, set to the same baud rate that means there will be that uh, the speed at which the data is transmitted and the speed at which the data should be received if there are both are same somehow then synchronization will be achieved here and let me remind you the synchronization here is achieved not because of the clock pulses but because of the baud rate we are setting the baud rate of transmitter and receiver in the same way so that we can uh, achieve this synchronization in uart so this is the main thing and also one more synchronization uh, way is start and stop bit as i told you in the frame format let me remind you so here in this uh, frame format there are start bit and stop bit so once start bit and stop bit are uh, received then in between whatever are there except this uh, parity bit all will be data so we will come to know start and stop bit once it is there that means if once start is there then we can say the data transmission is starting once stop is there then we can say that data transmission is going to end so totally let i will tell you one more thing this total whatever frame format i have told you know so this is uh, the complete packet i would say so this is a packet complete packet from start to stop this is we can say this is a packet format so this is the important thing where start and stop bit we can achieve the synchronization correct so if it, there is stop bit comes then we can say that the synchronization is going to uh, i mean achieve we can say in that way so these are the two ways in which achieve synchronization without using clock pulses okay so next we will come to understand what is this uart configuration can also be done with respect to uh, different modes of communication that is simplex communication half duplex communication and full duplex communication all these three types of communication can be achieved through uart uh, device so this simplex what is simplex simplex means either we can transmit a data or we can receive a data not both we can do only one is possible either i, can, I will only transmit the data i cannot i cannot receive the data as a such so this is mode of communication is nothing but simplex communication so what is this half duplex communication half duplex communication is like i can transmit the data also and i can receive the data also but not at the same time so in this way uh, this type of communication is called as half duplex communication and one more uh, but not at the same time in half duplex mode we cannot send and receive the data at the same time so this type of communication is called as half duplex communication and what is this full duplex communication i can transmit the data as well as receive the data at the same time okay so this mode of communication is called as full duplex communication and all these three modes of communication can be achieved by a uart configuration okay so next is important thing which we will come to know that is advantages disadvantages and applications so these are very important uh, topics so where we can apply this particular uh, uart concept 
so what are the advantages uh, of uart is as i told you this is a only two wire pro uh, protocol it mean that means only two wires are used no it is not complex like only tx and rx only two pins will be there so hence this is a very advantage for us so the hardware complexity is going to get minimized and also the advantage is no clock signal is necessary the clock signal is not at all required and we are achieving synchronization via baud rate so as i already told you so hence clock signal is also not required so that is again an advantage added advantage so has parity check for error checking see once i transmit the data if whether i receive the same data or not that needs to be checked and the same thing is happening via this parity bit which i already explained you so this is uh, we can also check the we can also validate whether the received data is correct or not using this error checking uh, concept and structure of data packet can be changed that means uh, data packet as i already told you like uh, now we can configurable the speed as well as this uh, packet format are uh, configurable this is just a frame format which i explained is just a standard way of uh, communication we can always uh, uh, modify the structure of uh, data packet i can say so and uh, one more thing is it is widely used because any of the microprocessor or anything uh, includes uart in it so that is hence this is commonly used and without uart it is very difficult and let me take you to the disadvantages we have studied the advantages now so disadvantages of uart are size of data frame is limited to maximum of 9 bits so data whatever i can say is like size of data frame maximum 9 bit data i can transmit via this uh, uart communication size of data frame is limited to maximum of 9 bits so this is an disadvantage so does not support multiple slave or multiple master systems that means uh, there is no multiple devices i can run. there is only two devices within which i can communicate that is transmitter and receiver only two devices uart1 and uart2 there is nothing like uh, i can take multiple uh, devices and convert it into master or slaves or something like that only one uart device can communicate with another dedicated uart2 device so this is clear i think so there is no multiple master or multiple slaves we can connect to in the system so next important thing is baud rate of each uart must be within 10% of each other as i already told you uh, the baud rate we are achieving synchronization in this uart uh, in the way of uh, setting the baud rate in transmitter as well as a receiver with the same baud rate for example 2400 bits per second if i said that then both should achieve 10% is fine like baud rate of each uart must be within 10% of each other means like 2400 if i said the another uh, uart device is with somewhere around uh, 2300 or something or something 10% that is still fine but if it is more if the baud rates there is more much mismatch between um, uart1 and uart2 then there will be uh, what to say like there is the communication will not achieve or the transmission reception is will not be successful so this is one of the disadvantage again like baud rate of each uart must be within 10% of each other that difference is still fine okay so next we will come to the important uh, thing called applications where and all uart is going to use so commonly used in as i told you microprocessors or microcontrollers uh, mostly it is used and it is used in devices including gps uh, gps units uh, we will use definitely the uarts and modems also we will be using this uh, uart and wireless communication also we will can use uart and uh, bluetooth modules and many more there are also many applications since this is a hardware part also microcontrollers or microprocessor hence these are very fundamental things microcontroller and microprocessor so wherever they are the, there are microcontroller or microprocessor definitely uart and uh, these are very helpful so this is all about uh, uh, this uart that is universal asynchronous receiver transmitter so please do subscribe to my youtube channel and press the bell icon not to get the uh, latest uh, updates so till then thank you bye